let's go to the Palace Papers. 45 years after Governor-General Sir John Kerr dismissed Labor Prime Minister Gough Whitlam, we now know what really happened. The correspondence revealed Kerr was meticulous in updating the Palace, but there is no evidence the Palace had a hand in the decision at all. The response by the media was divided. While Professor Jenny Hocking, the driving force behind the letters being released, maintained the Palace had no business discussing the options, ABC's Sabra Lane thought otherwise. Sir Martin Chartres, I haven't read all of the documents, but certainly in one letter he says he hopes that Sir John, writing about this, is able to work through his own thinking on this, and he certainly counselled Sir John to tread very carefully and use his reserve powers as a last resort. Doesn't that show that Buckingham Palace was keen not to be an active part of it, that they were pointing to Sir John that this is all your decision-making here? Oh, well, as I said, of course the final decision is Sir John Kerr's. It couldn't be otherwise. And the Australian's Paul Kennelly, who has written about the dismissal since day one, drew a distinction between the actions of Kerr and the actions of the Palace. No advance warning given by John Kerr to the Palace about the dismissal. There was a conspiracy. The conspiracy was in Government House, not Buckingham Palace. But over on Sunrise, it was Conspiracy Central, with host David Koch weighing in. Chartres was a mouthpiece for the Queen, and that's why we should be reading into it. She knew, the household knew, and basically gave Sir John Kerr the blessing. So, despite all the evidence to the contrary, the Queen supposedly gave Kerr the green light. But if you thought that was an extraordinary take, check out this one by Waleed Ali on the project. Yeah, because that was always the question. Was the palace involved at all? Um, it seems they're involved in some sort of a way. Do you think that, that what we've seen today, these letters reveal that the Queen or her representatives wanted to see Gough Whitlam sacked? Oh, look, you can't say that from the letters at all. So the Queen wanted Whitlam sacked? Well, even Hocking was backing away from that suggestion. And The Guardian's political editor, Catherine Murphy, also claimed the palace was interfering, writing revealingly... I'm going to be honest, I felt righteous anger reading this. I felt the affront to my democracy. Well, unfortunately, righteous anger and objective journalism do not go hand in hand. On the ABC, Fran Kelly quoted a legal expert who dismissed the conspiracies. Constitutional law expert Anne Toomey, I'm sure you've seen her comments. Um, she said that the letter, quote, blows away the silly conspiracy theories that we've been having for an awfully long time, which said this was all a conspiracy of the British and the establishment and the Queen. But over at the SBS, the conspiracy was still very much alive. Who was making it very clear to the palace that he was thinking about dismissing the prime minister? The palace should have said, in my view, the palace should have said, don't do it. And as one former Sydney Morning Herald columnist noted, the conspiracy used to be that the Queen interfered in the constitutional crisis. Now the conspiracy is that she didn't. Kel, I'd love to take your thoughts on this. What do you make of the whole palace saga? Are, are you uh, conspiratorial uh, in your reading of this? Or well, do you think maybe that the, the Republicans <laughs> have gone too far? Well, let me tell you, the reason the left is upset is the letters blow republicanism out of the water. They've got no argument left. Their main argument, and in fact, as far as I can tell, their only, only argument is, we need an Australian as the head of state. The letters prove we have an Australian as the head of state. The person who sacked Whitlam was Kerr. Now, and Kerr made the decision, and he told them afterwards that he made the decision. It was Kerr who decided that he was going to call in Malcolm Fraser. It was Kerr who said to Fraser, you're acting Prime Minister, but you're only caretaker. It was Kerr who said, here are the two conditions. You have to pass supply and you have to call for an immediate uh, election. That was Kerr, an Australian, appointed by Whitlam, as it happens. Uh, it was an Australian uh, who was doing the role of the head of state. Uh, we have an Australian head of state. The letters made make it really plain. So where does the Republican movement go from here? Now, one of the things that they did is they issued a, a really stupid statement criticising the Queen. When the letters came out saying the Queen didn't know about this and nothing to do with this, and they put out a, a press release criticising the... They're in trouble. They know they're in trouble. And now, I'm here as a, a dinosaur because I was actually there in 1975 as a working, very young journalist, but as a working journalist, so working on a program called AM uh, on the day all this happened. And I remember how excited we all were 
were about it. And I remember Gough's famous phrase when he said on the steps of Parliament House, maintain your rage. And as Diamond Jim McClellan said a short while afterwards, you can't maintain a rage any more than you can maintain an erection. It can't be done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but these people, these young left wingers, they're trying to maintain Goff's rage. I'm sorry, it's over. Uh, the whole story is over. Uh, this was an Australian who was our head of state. He made the decision. If you want to be angry with with uh, Kerr and say he was a bad man with a terrible character and made a bad, decision, that's fine. But your but your republicanism no longer exists. And uh, Gemma, what's what's your making of it? Have you had a read through the palace papers? Do you draw the same conclusion of Walid Ali? Do you think the Queen was scheming all along? If I draw the same conclusion as Walid Ali, you can safely assume Jack I've been kidnapped, <laughs> and you can you can send the SAS in to rescue me. Um, look, uh, there's a couple of things I'd like to to point out about this. The first thing is why can't this just be history? This is history. We now see in black and white what was said and what wasn't said. So how people feel about it is absolutely irrelevant. We've got. The, the, the most eminent constitutional law experts saying no conspiracy, most measured-minded pe people, reasonable people who aren't pushing an agenda, Republican or otherwise, look at it and go, this is what history has told us, how fabulous that we now know, let's all move on. But to Kel's point as well, actually one more point on that, the, the, you know, the whole... Um, you know, journalistic narrative, and I use that word loosely, that is still trying to pump along the conspiracy theory, it's really disingenuous and it and it's demeaning because it's certainly, it's just not reflected in fact. So, you know, keep trying to find that needle in a haystack and, and good luck to you, those who are doing that. But what I would say is in full agreement with Kel around if the Australian Republican movement wants to prosecute a case that Australians in general, particularly people like me who do not care, uh, can get on board with and see as worthwhile for the future of our nation that goes beyond rank vanity, quite frankly. They're going to have to do a better job than pouring manure over one, one of the world's most respected monarchs. And whether you like her or not, whether you're a republic or not, the Queen Elizabeth II is an incredible monarch. She has given her life in leadership and service to her country. Uh, we don't need to go into that. That is simply a fact accepted by most reasonable people. The Australian Republican movement in this country is a dead duck in the water unless they can have a good hard look at themselves and understand what they stand for and try and talk to the very people they're trying to engage. Otherwise, they're going to be going around this revolving door of losership <laughs> for the rest of their days. They, they don't know how to gain traction because I don't even think they know what they want either. <laughs> well, well said, Gemma. Well, look, that's uh, all the time we have for the panel. So, Gemma Tognini, Kel Richards, thank you very much for joining me. Jack, we'll thanks very much. Great to be with you.